when you hold things down, often after a while, the, an explosion happens. <laughs> it's like a boiling kettle. Can't hold it for that long. And, and then you have some kind of rationalization in your mind. Why, why, it's, you'll do it anyway. The mind will give you a reason. Certain actions take place. You do things you know they're not the optimal things to do, but you can't help it. It's something acts through you. Um, there's a, there seems to be some power there that makes you do things that you know, know are not right or not good for you, and yet you can't stop it. That seems to be the case. Um, and that, of course, um, is often the case with people who are... With you, it might be many different different areas of your life, but uh, um, this is also the case with addictions, for example, people who are addicted to a certain substance or who are addicted to eating too much or drinking. Um, there's something that overpowers them in you that seems to obscure the awareness or the awareness is pushed to, to the side and this thing, this, this powerful thing, does it anyway. <laughs> and again, my answer is a little bit similar to um, what I said to the first questioner uh, tonight. Uh, the, the power of presence needs to grow in you so that it is strong enough not to, it's not willpower, because willpower is not the best way of dealing with these things, but it's what I'm talking about could sometimes be confused with willpower, but willpower includes the um, application of a force to hold something down. Let's say um, if your addiction is to um, have a to indulge in uh, intoxicating beverages, in other words, booze is the British word, <laughs> uh, then, uh, and you can feel it, it's, it comes on, there it comes, you know the bottles are there, there they are, and you feel you have to go there, and you have to reach out, and you have to pour yourself a drink. Now, when you're not aware at all, you don't even know what you're doing. You're so unconscious that you, you're already holding the drink and you're drinking. Then you, at that point, you, you even know that you're drinking. Uh, the same with food. I've spoken to people who have had addictions to food. They often say they wake up when they're already, they've already eaten in the middle of the night. They've already unconsciously gone to the fridge, taken out the chocolate cake, and then they're already halfway through the chocolate cake when suddenly they're like, what am I doing? But So awareness comes in at a very late point. Willpower would be to hold a, an urge down that say, I've got, they have to pull, or even what the example you gave, you want to turn on the TV and you know it's not right because I, I'm not here for that and he actually told us not to do it. <laughs> and, And I, but I can't help it. I have to go. I can't. I can't. No willpower. You would. You would say, I'm going to hold this down. I'm not going to do it. And I can, can feel the urge, but you're holding it down. Um, when you hold things down, often after a while. The, an explosion happens. It's like a boiling kettle. Can't hold it for that long. And, and then you have some kind of rationalization in your mind. Why, why it's, you'll do it anyway. The mind will give you a reason. I spoke to a man who is addicted to, um, to food. And he was, his body was it's very unhealthy because extremely da dangerously overweight. Unfortunately, he's passed away, but he was a wonderful man. 
and he talked to me and um, <coughs> often before he goes to the to indulge in excessive eating he would his mind would say something like you've had a rough day you really deserve a treat it, it, it explains why it's the right thing. I'm not going to do it for much longer, but just today I, I need, really need a treat. Life is not, hasn't been treating me, but it's the only pleasure I have. What shall I do? It's all I have. There's no other pleasure in my life. Okay, go to the fridge. You listen. I attempted to be able to show him that this thought is a deception, and I had a little bit of success, but unfortunately it was too late to save him. Well, he is no longer in the body, but that's okay. He's the, the essence of never. There is the, he probably reincarnates now into uh, the opposite, perhaps, in order to learn a, a lesson. Um, Again, what I said to your first questioner, to practice presence power when you're not particularly tempted by anything and you're just in your room, there's no particular temptation. Go into the body, feel the, feel the inner body, be aware, be present. When you sense perception, I recommended that practice. Sense perception, feel the presence uh, uh, pervading every cell in your body, the inner body awareness, and so that there is enough presence for when the, the, this impulse comes, you use it as, don't, don't say go away or something like that because it won't go away, it'll do it anyway. It, the impulse comes, whatever it may be, and you observe, you realize it's not a good thing that you, it wants you to do, and if there is enough awareness, you use it as every uh, every time an impulse of that kind comes. This this is your special spiritual practice. So instead of wanting to get rid of it, welcome when an impulse of that kind comes, and see that this is the specially des spiritual practice specially designed for you. Of course, it is. Uh, and so, how do uh, how how do you transform this into spiritual practice? First, you realize this is an opportunity for practicing. And the first thing you could do is you practice delaying, obeying the impulse, not obeying it immediately, but delaying it. So, and you observe then. Let's say you when you wanted to go to the TV and turn this thing on. Or you feel the impulse, or say, okay, oh, here's my next spiritual practice. I'm now going to delay the turning on of this show on TV for three minutes. And during those three minutes, you observe this, the impulse in you. You, you observe, it has, it's an energy form, and, and you observe it. Oh, there you are. There you are. Mm. And you feel it. It's like a little gremlin or something. <laughs> and so this time gap can be a, a, a very useful first practice, that you introduce a time gap before you give in. You're not saying, I'm not going to give in. No, you say, three minutes. During those three minutes, I'm going to observe you. And you shine the light of consciousness, the light of awareness on this impulse, which is an energy form. And it can be an energy form that is in you as a kind of emotion. It can also dangerously invade your mind and make you, th uh, the explanation I gave just now with this uh, friend of mine, the thought, uh, thought comes into your head that explains why you should give in to this impulse that can happen easily. And there too, you need to be present enough, sufficiently aware, so that you do not believe in every thought, especially, especially those kinds of thoughts. You don't believe in every thought that comes into your head. Oh, 
You observe the thought because the thought is part of it. And, and it's, even to the thought you say, oh, there you are. There's the thought and there's the feeling behind the thought. And you, you set aside three minutes. During those three minutes you observe that, isn't that interesting? Wonderful spiritual practice. And you as to, while you observe, you grow in consciousness. You, you apply consciousness to it. There you, only three minutes, three minutes. And then after the three minutes, see how you feel. It may not, it may have dissolved, but probably not yet. It's still there. And then you can see, can I do another two or three minutes? Am I strong enough for that? Is my awareness strong enough? And yes, it is. Don't believe you might, oh no, stop this nonsense, do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, and so you, and then you see five or six minutes of, and then um, what happens after that we don't know. It is possible that the impulse has receded, gone b back to a dormant state, and you suddenly you don't have to do it. It's also possible that the impulse is still there, and you cannot after five minutes. The, there's not really enough awareness left, and you just you you have to go and do it. But at least the, the five-minute interval, the time gap was very important. And when uh, anything like that happens, you always introduce a time gap for your spiritual practice, uh, during which you do not hold it down, but you observe it. So you, you don't push it down, you observe, oh, there you are. So if it's a gremlin, you don't, you don't say, you, you, you hold you down. <laughs> no, no you, 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 there's a gremlin, you look at it. There it is, oh. Now, now the interesting thing, when you, you apply awareness to something, you shine the light of consciousness on it, the possibility of transformation is also there. It arises as you shine the light of consciousness on it. Um, this is the famous um, example from fairy stories and so on. The uh, the frog. You don't you don't kill the frog or you or do something with it. You you kiss the frog, and the moment you kiss the frog, it turns into the prince. And so the frog stands for, this is like mythology, there's some wisdom embedded in these fairy stories, which by the way, were, were not, many of them were not created by the people who wrote them. They were already orally tra transmitted over long periods of time, so they are mythologies that often contain a lot of wisdom. And there's certainly a lot of wisdom in kissing the frog, which then turns into something beautiful. So there's a, something ugly, but you give it, you kind of, you give it an acceptance and love. You look at it, and then it, it, it transformation happens. So that is the spiritual practice, and after a while you will find that initially, perhaps, after the time gap, you still do it. But then gradually this time gap gets longer, and, the, and then you may observe that the energy behind the impulse weakens and it, it subsides until, the, until next time. But gradually it weakens and this, all these self-sabotage mechanisms then begin to gradually disappear if you apply the awareness to it. So observe them, there it is. So think of the frog. Uh, these are all the frogs and whatever they are, gremlins, frogs that uh, live in you as energy fields. And the energies are trapped there. They are not in themselves uh, bad. They are trapped, like the pain body is an energy that is emotional energy that's trapped. When the pain body dissolves, it can transforms into presence. It's like a fire, you put a log into a fire, or so the, it's consumed and transmuted, perhaps is the word, it's transmuted 
into presence. And there, here we have again the famous example of in Middle Ages, certain philosophers were very interested in alchemy. Alchemy was supposed to be the transformation of base metal into gold through a chemical process of transformation. Uh, but the, the true meaning behind alchemy was the transformation of human consciousness. And they have many images and so on. They could not uh, speak and write about this openly because they would have been executed by the church at the time. So they had to hide all these symbols as if it were to do the, the transformation of base metal into gold, uh, of something that is, first of all, uh, not very desirable into something wonderful. And that's the alchemical process of transmutation, which really is something in the human psyche. Um, there's an entire long treatise written by Carl Jung, the psychologist, which on alchemy with countless illustrations and just fascinating things. But it's all, it's the transformation of something undesirable initially into awareness or into consciousness. So, and this is, so you're, you're lucky to have that. Taylor designed spiritual practice for you. <laughs> <laughs>